everyone, since it's already August, I decided that I should probably have spoken to you about my favourite books of 2019 so far, but I haven't yet, so here I am. I've rated six books, five stars, in 2019, which is a small number compared to some, but I'm quite picky with my five stars. If I give out a five star rating, then it has to be an incredible book. Anything else gets four stars or below. Five stars means that it was almost perfect, if not absolutely perfect, and I pretty much have nothing bad to say about it. So without further ado, let me get into the books. The first one is a book that you've heard me talk about a lot, because it's the first book that I rated five stars this year, and I've reread it once already, and I'm probably going to reread it again before the year is out, and that is The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. This is an adult fantasy book. It is pitched as being set in 18th century Cairo, but it's not. It's set in the fantasy world. It incorporates Middle Eastern mythology, specifically the jinn. So Nari, the main character, discovers that she is part of this magical world and she goes along with a jinn to the jinn city, which is called Devabad, or the city of brass. This first book is basically her discovery of this new world and where she fits into it. It's got some incredible mythology and some really amazing characters. I think these are my favourite characters that I've read all year. Nari is just fantastic. There's also Ali and Dara, who I guess I kind of love, but I have some things to say about them. I have to say the most interesting characters for me are probably Montada and Jamshid. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing those names right, but they're great characters, I couldn't get enough of them, and this book is thick, it's enormous, but I flew through it. Once I was past the first 50 or so pages, when I was getting used to the terminology, because the author does not stop to give you a chance to get used to it, I was flying through the book, and honestly, best book I've read all year. Following on from that is the sequel, The Kingdom of Copper. I gave this one five stars as well, and it's even bigger, and I read it even faster. Because I was already used to the world building and the characters, I didn't have to take the time to get used to it and familiarise myself with all the terminology and the mythology. I have to say, the beginning is a bit slow because some people's chapters, I'm not going to say who because of spoilers, dragged a little bit because they were very samey, but they did introduce some cool concepts as well, so I can see why they were there. They certainly weren't pointless and then the ending for this one just broke my heart. It was honestly incredible. Actually, I cried at the City of Brass as well, but the Kingdom of Copper also cried. I honestly cannot recommend this series enough. Please go and pick it up. There's a reason that I'm talking about these two first, because they're the best books I've read all year. Moving on from epic fantasy, I also want to talk about The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I wasn't sure whether to give this one five stars, because it's one that had to sit with me for a bit before I decided, but I did absolutely love it. It's a very mysterious book and I don't want to say too much about it because you discover more and more as you read on as the main character discovers things, but basically the main character is called Aidan Bishop. He is in a mansion, he wakes up and he's not really sure why he's there or why he can't remember anything. He just knows that he has to look into Evelyn Hardcastle's death and Evelyn Hardcastle keeps dying over and over again in various ways. It's kind of like Groundhog Day, or as though someone has a time turner. Aiden has to figure out this mystery and save her life. I thought this book was so clever. You can tell that the author put so much work into this. The author must have had post-it notes all over the place, with like a timeline with what was going on because it's, there's so much back and forth. And there are so many clues in the first half of the book that then don't come to light until the second half but when you go and revisit those scenes because sometimes all it takes is a different point of view and I thought it was so clever. I'm going to reread this hopefully next year at the beginning because I want to experience it again through new eyes, kind of like Aiden was doing throughout the book. I just thought it was really, really clever. My next five star book is my most recent five star read and that is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. This is an adult fantasy book. It's about a girl called Rin who starts off as a teenager and she gets herself into this military academy because it's something that she really wanted to do and she worked her ass off to get there. It's set in a country inspired by real life China and China in this world has some tensions with Japan. While Rin is at this military academy, tensions grow, war threatens to break out. I absolutely loved this book, I flew through it as well. This happens with all of my five star reads, I just can't put them down. I thought Rin was a fantastic character. I'm a bit iffy about her towards the end because of some of the things that she did. Once I read The Dragon Republic, I'll forgive her, I guess. It will really help to see how she's dealing with those things. But she was incredible in this book. I love that she came from basically poverty and worked her way up 
and now she's kind of like super powerful even though she still doesn't quite know what she's doing. I have to say that my favourite character was Master Jiang. I couldn't get enough of his character, I thought he was brilliant and I hope to learn more about him in the sequel. I've seen a few people say that this one drags in the beginning but I really don't think it does. I think a lot of people weren't expecting the Academy part to be such big parts of the book because it does take up like half of it at least but honestly i had no problems with it i really like academy and school training stuff so it wasn't a problem and i ended up adoring this book it's so well written it's very very dark as you know everyone has talked about the trigger warnings for this one there's a trigger warning page on the author's website if you want to go and check that out there is one chapter where it's incredibly dark and it's often brought up when talking about trigger warnings. I did go into this book thinking that these horrible things in that specific chapter would be happening to this character. I didn't know what the specific things were but I assumed like horrible things would be happening to her but instead she's experiencing them which I thought was something I should have known from the beginning so maybe I should have looked at the trigger warning page. If you don't want to look at the trigger warnings fair enough but if you're worrying about what exactly happens to the character then there are some dark things happening to Rin but the dark things that happen in this dark chapter aren't happening directly to her. She's the one experiencing and watching, kind of. And that's all I'm going to say without spoilers. I don't know if I explained that properly at all. But basically, I really, really love this book. The final two books are ones that I don't own physical copies of yet. The first one being Big Little Lies. I read this one while I was on holiday and I was not expecting to give it five stars. I wasn't expecting it to be so emotionally brutal. Big Little Lies is set in a small town full of rich mums. Their kids all go to nursery together. On the first day, one person's child is accused of biting another and it all kicks off from there. There's like mum drama and relationship drama and kids fighting each other and it all gets a bit mad. To be honest, I thought that's all it was going to be, but actually there was so much more than that. It was so emotional and I wasn't expecting some of the things that happened. So there is a lot of domestic abuse in this book and I usually don't do well with domestic abuse, especially when there's no warning, because no one has been talking about the domestic abuse in this book, which I think is horrible. Like, you should be saying <laughs> that it's in here. But in this one, I thought that it was portrayed incredibly well and really respectfully. I don't think there were any unnecessary scenes. The characters involved all made sense and their reactions made sense. And it was more about the characters healing and getting away from the abuse than the abusive relationship itself if that makes sense. I just really loved it and I connected with the characters so so much and I wasn't expecting it and I think that's why it got five stars from me because it was so unexpected and surprising that it drew so many emotions from me. I was crying by the pool on holiday and I just wasn't expecting that to happen. I was expecting a mystery thriller from this book and that's not what it was. Finally, the last book that I gave five stars is To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. This is a short sci-fi novella by her. It's about some scientists who go off into space and they're researching on different planets. It's very character-based like the rest of her books, but I just loved it. Becky Chambers always does such a fantastic job with her characters and also manages to get in quite a bit of world building in there as well. And I was surprised that she managed to pack so much into this tiny novella. I would have loved for this to be a full book. So you follow the characters journey as they go from one planet to another and each planet kind of affects them in different ways and they kind of grow in various different ways. And it was just so beautifully done. And I was crying towards the end because Becky Chambers is so talented. I've given every single book I've read by her five stars and I can't wait to see what she comes out with in the future. Those are the six books that I've rated five stars in 2019 so far. Along with those, I've also got four honourable mentions because I didn't quite give them five stars, but they've definitely stuck with me throughout the year. I'm just going to go through them very quickly for you. The first one is Girls Burn Brighter. This is set in India. It's about two friends who get separated in their lives and they try to find their way back to each other. The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This is the first book in an epic fantasy series. It's about people who can control the earth, kind of. They're basically earthbenders. And what's really good about the series is that all the characters are black. Educated, which is non-fiction about the author's life. She was raised as a Mormon and you learn about her kind of abusive family and her experiences discovering the outside world. And Heroine by Mindy McGuinness, which is a very dark story about a teenager who becomes an addict. And it's kind of about her journey starting off on painkillers to becoming a heroin addict to 
hopefully recovering. Let me know which books you've rated five stars in the comments below so I can go and check them out because I'm looking for some more five star reads. I will leave affiliate links in the description below so you can go and check these books out. Don't feel obligated to buy any but if you did then I would receive a small commission from that. Thank you for watching, I'll be back soon with another video, bye!